everyone, welcome to the Alvatex channel. Today we are tackling an important topic for professionals in metallurgy – how to choose the right XRF analyzer for your specific needs. Metallurgy often involves analyzing various metals and alloys, each with unique requirements. Choosing the right analyzer can help you ensure accuracy, efficiency, and compliance with industry standards. In metallurgy, you may encounter tasks like identifying alloys composition, ensuring material quality, detecting impurities, or sorting scrap metals. Each of these tasks requires specific capabilities from an XRF analyzer. The variety of materials you'll analyze, whatever its solid blocks, powders, or coatings, means your analyzer must be versatile enough to handle diverse tasks with precision. So, let's break down the key features that matter when selecting an XRF analyzer for metallurgical application. This includes the X-ray tubes, filters, collimators, and the detector. The X-ray tube generates the energy needed to analyze samples. For example, Prospector 3 Advanced and Max models used the rhodium X-ray tube, which provides high sensitivity to both light and heavy elements group. This makes them ideal for analyzing complex alloys. Filters play a critical role in optimizing the X-ray spectrum. Prospector 3 Advanced and Max models features an automatic multi-position filter system, allowing for precise analysis of complex materials. In contrast, the base model has the fixed filters, which works well for standard applications. If you are working with small zones or objects, such as solder joints, collimators are essential. The advanced and max models include automatic collimators for pinpoint accuracy, enabling detailed analysis of even the smallest areas. SDD detectors in the advanced and max models ensure high sensitivity and speed, which is particularly important when analyzing materials containing both light and heavy elements. Now, let's compare the three Prospector 3 models to help you find the right one for your metallurgical needs. We'll also look at the specific alloys they are best suited for and the types of tasks they can handle. The Prospector 3 base model, which is blue one, are perfect for routine metallurgical tasks. Its tungsten X-ray tube and fixed filter provide reliable performance for standard applications. It is a great choice for analyzing ferrous and non-ferrous metals, such as carbon steel, stainless steel, and copper alloys. Typically, tasks include sorting scrap metals, verifying the composition of incoming raw materials, routing quality control checks during production. The Prospector 3 Advanced is designing for more demanding tasks, featuring a rhodium X-ray tube, automatic filter switching, and an SDD detector. These upgrades make it suitable for analyzing complex materials and multi-component alloys. This model is ideal for analyzing alloys like aluminum and titanium, commonly used in automotive and aerospace industry. The advanced model excels at tasks like ensuring precise alloy compositions for critical components, analyzing plated or coated materials such as galvanized steel or anodized aluminum, detecting trace elements to comply with industry standards. The Prospector 3 Max offers the most advanced capabilities, including analysis of light elements like magnesium and sodium. Its helium birch featured an enhanced detector, make it definitely the top choice for specialized applications. This model is particularly suited for analyzing lightweight magnesium alloys, high-performance aerospace materials, and rear-earth elements. 
the Max model handles advanced tasks, such as identifying impurities in high-purity metals, analyzing advanced multi-component alloys used in critical industries like aerospace and defense, measuring ultra-thin coating of high-precision parts. And now, let's move on to the most interesting part of our today's video, to the practice part. And we will make the small experiment uh, with three of our metal samples. Well, basically, uh, just one of them is actually this one. This is the 316 grade, which is a standard alloy, that the basic analyzer will definitely see it. So, we'll start with that one, right? All we need is just our Prospector 3, the base model, then to choose the calibration of alloys without light elements, and just to check this one. Basically, we put the duration for 5 seconds, which is totally enough for us to check it. And now let's make the first analysis. So we are done with our first analysis, and analyzer shows us it's a 98% match to stainless type 316. And it also provides us some elements which is all considered here. And now let's try to measure another part which is has the concentration of aluminum. We don't know how what the, the concentration of aluminum here, but actually let's check it out and see how the basic will show it us. So Dealing with the same, we just need to position the device in the right way, so we have all the area covered. And here we have our second analysis, and here where, where things get a little bit interesting, because we know that the concentration of four uh, basic elements of the heavy metal group, and we also have the mark which says LE which is basically light elements, and it equals 99.5%. So we definitely know that the concentration of light elements in this sample is 99.5. However, we don't know which exact elements uh, actually in this sample, and we don't know the combination of it. So we might know that aluminum here, uh, but we don't know the concentration of aluminum. Also, we know that there is some of magnesium, and we don't know the concentration of it either. So, all we know is the combination of light elements presented in this sample. And now let's check how the Prospector 3 Max will face the same task. So, first of all, we start in it and go into the calibration which says alloys, which basically includes all the light elements group. And starting with our first samples as 316 of stainless type. So we position our device. Also, we can just turn on the camera for us to see the sample. All right, here it is. And let's start the analysis. So we are done with our first analysis for Prospector 3 Max device and we can conclude that both analyzers, uh, the basic one and the more advanced one, uh, just equally handle it. So it's not a problem for him. And now let's check out the one with aluminum in it. Just to check the concentration and to know more about what elements of light element group are presented in this sample. So, Doing the same, just positioning the device in the right way, using camera and collimator for it, and just press start. So we are done with our second analysis for uh, our sample with the light elements, and now we can definitely tell that 99.7% uh, of this sample is consist from aluminum. Basically, uh, the leading element is aluminum, all other elements are below one, so we will not name him, but we can tell that now we know for sure what was the light element in this sample, and that it's not spread between the other light elements. The, the mark is 99 for aluminum only. And let's take one with also light elements in it, 
it's just the probably base of copper. So let's let's make a measurement on it. So uh, with our third sample for Prospector 3 Max, we have the result, which is as we said, it basically contains from copper and uh, it has 95.2% of copper in it, but also we have the 3.5% of silicon, uh, which is basically uh, will not be shown with the uh, Prospector basic model. So to determine which exact the LE element in it, you need to use the advanced or max models for it. And the basic one will just show you that there is uh, 3.5 concentration of light element, just without the name of it. And our last, but definitely not least topic for today will be especially useful for professionals who work with the small particles, uh, because we gotta measure the plate. And uh, more precisely, we will measure this part of it. Can you see it? Don't worry, me neither. Because uh, it's none of us, it's on our devices. So let's just count. It's gonna be the fifth one from right, from uh, the fifth one from left side. And let's position it on the device with the help of uh, our camera and also the help of our collimator. So first of all, let's try to find it, this one. Yes, this one's from here, and we said it's going to be fifths from right, so we're going to calculate from here. And one more time, we will just change our collimator. We have the one for two millimeters, one, two, three, four, and here the fifth one. So let's just a bit separate it from others. But mostly they made from the same material. Here it is, all right, and we done with the positioning, let's start our measurement. And we are done with our final measurement, and just to add a little bit, uh, we changed the duration of analysis for 15 seconds, because when you work with the small parts, it's better to make sure and uh, double check. The double checking is actually the time, the duration of analysis. So 15 seconds for small particles will be absolutely enough if we're talking about metals. Uh, now let's check the result. Well, first of all, we have the 93% uh, match to the grade 85 1D. Well, we have the copper base as the copper presented here in amount of 71.4%. Then next one, we have tin in amount of 27.2. The next one is iron. And the last one, manganese, which is really small concentration of 0.2. To conclude, even the small particles can be checked if you have the right tools for it. So all the impossible can be possible. To summarize, the base model is excellent for standard alloys and straightforward tasks. The advanced model adds flexibility for light alloys and coated materials. And finally, the MAX model delivers unmatched precision for light elements and complex multi-component alloys. Contact us to learn more and find the perfect analyzer for your business. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more insightful videos. Stay tuned and see you soon!